if you look at a map in the, in this in the southeastern part of the Congo, right along the Zambian border, um, there's a little arc from a town called Lubumbashi to Kolowezi. It's a little crescent that's about 400 kilometers by 80 kilometers. And that little crescent of Earth holds more reserves of cobalt than the rest of the planet combined. And as a consequence of this scramble to get everyone driving EVs and to get everyone upgrading their phones and gadgets each and every year, they can't get the cobalt out of the ground quickly enough. So that part of the Congo, when you ask, what is it like? What do you see? It's been completely obliterated. The earth has been ripped, gouged, torn apart, millions of trees, clear cut, enormous, giant, open pit mine craters. I mean, you can see them from space. Wow. 10, 20, 30 square kilometers in size. And there are hundreds of them. And all these mines dumping toxic effluents into the air, into the water. So the whole countryside has been contaminated. Mines that are the size of cities, just countryside obliterated. And then you have hundreds of thousands of people digging with their hands, with pickaxes, with strips of rebar, families, mother, father, three kids, as young as six or seven, all of them scrounging because of this fever at the top of the chain to get cobalt in the batteries. And they can't get it out of the ground quickly enough. So there's this ready-made slave labor force because they're so poor and they've all been displaced by these huge mines that take entire swaths of countryside, kick everybody out, and now they're living on the fringes in, in shacks and huts. Uh, and the only way to survive is to fill a stack or two of cobalt a day. So you'll have young children in trenches and pits, caked and toxic filth, because cobalt is toxic to touch and breathe. You have mothers, young mothers, their babies strapped to their backs, hacking at the ground, all this toxic dust coming up into their lungs, into their baby's lungs. You have an entire part of the planet that's been destroyed in order to facilitate our green transition. And that's the story that doesn't, that doesn't emerge. Yeah. And wait a minute. This push to have EV mandates and uh, transition uh, to electric vehicle fleets uh, in order to save the environment. No protecting the earth for our children and grandchildren. But how can it come at the cost of destroying their part of the planet? Does, does Africa not count? Do their trees not count the same as ours? Is their water not the same as our water? And how is it that we're charging so fast forward um, with this transition to EVs that no one's stopping to to see, are we trampling on other members of humanity along the way? And that's exactly what's happening. And that's what you see on the ground. It's plain as day. It's right there for anyone to see. Uh, and, and now with Cobalt Red out in the world, you can hear the voices of those people in the Congo telling you directly. Uh, it doesn't have to be me. Shouldn't be anyone else acting as an intermediary. The point of my book was there are people here who are looking at an apocalypse that we've caused them to suffer and they're screaming and no one's listening. And yet we all rely on them every day. So it's, so we need to hear what they have to say. And that's, that's the point of the book. Uh, and hopefully uh, it will lead to policymakers and consumers just taking a beat um, and sorting out and setting right the bottom of the chain rather than just charging forward and not paying attention to the consequence of the people uh, in the Congo. It's like, it's so hard to hear. It's like, it's so big and it's so upsetting. And I already, I mean, I've heard you talk about this before. <laughs> I heard you talk about it in the book, but 
I mean, do these companies know? Sorry. <laughs> like, uh, do these companies know what's going on? Like these EV companies, Apple. I mean, what? Tell me about all the products. I mean, we know about EVs, computers, phones. I mean, so look, first of all, they all know. Yeah. I mean, it's like this. If they don't know, then that is the manifestation of such a severe degree of criminal negligence and ignorance that they should all be fired. Every director, <laughs> CEO should all be fired. If they don't know that there's a, there's a precious segment of humanity that's being obliterated every time they hawk their phones and cars at the bottom of their supply chain, if they're not aware of that, then they should all be fired for uh, for negligence. and Or they should just get down into the pits themselves and start digging the cobalt with their own hands. So they all know. Um, you have cobalt in the batteries of pretty much every smartphone, every tablet, every laptop, every e-scooter, e-bike, rechargeable, anything probably has cobalt in the battery. And but the real demand is coming from EVs because an EV battery can require up to 10 plus kilograms of refined cobalt, which is a thousand times as much as you'd have in a smartphone. Now, in order to meet, you know, uh, COP26, COP27 um, uh, mandates on numbers of EVs that should be on the road. We're talking hundreds of millions of new EVs on the road by the year 2035, 2050, hundreds mm -hmm. of millions. Mm -hmm. Each of them requiring five, 10, 11 kilograms of refined cobalt. And it all is coming out of Congo. So when I said that there's this fever, there's this scramble that you can't get cobalt out of the ground quickly enough, and that's, that requires this entire population of people to scrimp and scrounge and, and put themselves in enormous hazard and risk for a dollar or two a day to get that cobalt up and into the batteries. And the companies all know. They know. They just... Here's the thing. The fact that they haven't, none of them, gotten on the ground at the bottom of their supply chains and ensured that the statements they make about protecting human rights in their supply chains, and they all say down to the mining level, they all say down to the mining level. The fact that none of these companies have done nearly enough <clears throat> to actually achieve the things they say they're doing means those people over there don't count Yeah, to them. And so when I said we've dialed the clock back two and a half centuries, that was slave trade logic. That was colonial thinking. Oh, these people are savages. They don't count. Their nature is to be enslaved. I mean, th that's what people said two and a half centuries ago. And now you have CEOs worth billions, companies worth trillions, all relying on these people and treating them like a brute labor force, same, same mindset. They don't count the same. You wouldn't see anybody in Cupertino sending their kids into toxic pits to dig for minerals for a dollar a day. But it's okay to send the kids of the Congo. Right. And that's what has to be, that has to be set right. And we have to, we have to come to terms with the realities that are implicit in that dynamic, that those people over there still don't count. Uh, and when they die, it doesn't count. When they scream, we don't hear. But if we make plenty of money off of them and their resources, it's under their feet, so it's their resources, um, then everything's okay. 